Hey friends, welcome and welcome back to my channel. I'm Madonna and on this channel we talk about all things stories and self-care. So that's books that we love, books that we want to read, authors that we love, and of course self-care. If you are at all interested in that sort of content, definitely stick around, subscribe down below, and hit the notification bell that, so that you're notified of every single time that I upload. So it is now April third today. I thought that it'd be a good idea to talk about all of the books that I read this quarter. I also saw a really cool idea of someone ranking the books that they read in order. So I was like, you know what? Let's be messy. <laughs> Let's, you know, attempt that as well. It's really hard because I pretty much love everything that I read, but you gotta everything has its place. So we're going to talk about all of the books that I read, what I thought about them, how I ranked them in relation to each other, and if I would recommend them for anyone to read as well. If you're interested and you want to see what's going on and what I've been reading and what I think, then definitely stay tuned. So first I'll go through and list out all of the books that I actually read in sequential order. So in the order that I read them, and then we'll get to the ranking. So Let's go ahead and get started with January. January, I read a total of four books. I read Legend Born by Tracy Dion, Parable of the Sower, which is Earthseed number one by Octavia E. Butler, Stay With Me by Ayobami Adebayo, and Imago, which is the third book in the Xenogenesis series by Octavia E. Butler. In February, I only read one book and it is still something that I am beating myself up for. But the book that I did end up reading in February was Jade War by Fonda Lee. And then for March, I did a little bit better and I read a total of four books. The first one being The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna, Against the Loveless World by Susan Abuhawa, Beach Read by Emily Henry, and Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Boley. Before we get into the ranking, I wanna just caveat and say that these are my personal opinions of these books. If you have read any of them and you disagree agree with the order in which they are ranked. I definitely understand. We all have a personal experience when we read a book and it may resonate with somebody more than it resonate with you know someone else. So for me these are just my personal experiences with these books and some books are just more personal and I just enjoyed them a little bit more than others. That's not to say that if you think differently that you are somehow wrong or, or anything like that. So just keep that in mind as you're watching and hopefully you have a good time as I'm talking about all of the books that I've read this quarter. The first book that I'm going to talk about, which is the least favorite or least lowest ranked book that I read this quarter for me was The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. This book is not a new book from this author, uh, or it's not a, this is not a new author. This is an author that is pretty well respected and well known within the literary um, world. She writes a lot of historical fictions, a lot of like literary fiction. So a lot of her work is, steam, is steeped in kind of exploring the ideas of what occurred in the past. So for this particular book, it's set in, I believe the 1930s, where where there is um, the Great Depression going on and there's a big migration happening from the Midwest to the West. So Elsa, who is our main character, is living in Texas and she has to make a heart-wrenching, gut-wrenching, hard decision of whether or not she stays in Texas or if she decides to go to California where she's not sure that if there are opportunities. So for this book, I liked the premise of it. I liked the fact that we are getting that historical concept. We are understanding and exploring what that actual real life experience would look like for someone, especially a single woman that has two kids and has to make a life in a time where you had to be tied to a man in order to make things work. Seeing that and seeing that example of what we understand to be a strong woman and what ultimately the best decision is that she has to make for her family. So I liked the premise of it. However, I did not enjoy the writing from this book. I think the author definitely employs a tell not show me type of writing. So me personally, I enjoy being shown a world, shown, you know, an idea, a concept rather than just being told. Um, I think the way the author writes is very much, you know, she did this, she was told this, this thing happened rather than some type of language that kind of paints that world for me instead of just saying here's here's a list of things that happened so for that particular reason it's rated the lowest on my list at 2.5 out of 5 stars i wouldn't say that it's a book that i would not recommend someone to read so if you do like historical fictions i I think it, it was a really interesting read. I will say that it kind of got a little weird towards the end in that the the whatever the author thought would be the solution to the 
problems for the people in that area. The, 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 the solution to the problem just kind of was a little strange, but all in all, I think it was a, a decently written book. And I, I wouldn't completely write off Kristen Hanna in terms of her work. I've heard some of her other work is really, really um, well, highly regarded and, and respected. And so I, I am looking forward to maybe reading some other works from her. But for this one, it, it was not um, my favorite out of all of the books that I read this quarter. The second lowest rated book on my list is Beach Read by Emily Henry and I rated this 2.75 out of 5 stars. Now I will caveat and say that this is a romance novel and I am very much not a fan or a huge fan of the romance genre. I think it's fine. I think people that write no romance well kudos to them. People that enjoy reading romance, kudos to them. But for me personally, it's just not my favorite genre. That's not to say I won't ever read it, but it's just not my favorite. However, I will say that, I mean, I had read a book in this in this sequence of um, books. I had read a book that was a little more heavy and, and topic and just like I needed something a little bit more flowery, a little bit more enjoyable <laughs> to kind of cleanse my palate, I will say. So I enjoyed reading this book. I actually um, found it, I wouldn't say super interesting, but it was an enjoyable time for what, it, it served the purpose for what I needed it to do. And I also really liked the the premise of it. So a typical romance novel is just like boy meets girl and you know, blah, blah, blah. But there was a little bit more nuance and like context to this book. It's about a young, it's about a, a romance novelist actually who meets a another novelist who is more in the like literary fiction like he just writes a lot of like hard hitting tough you know stories and they end up falling in love and they're the the most unlikely characters to be in you know in in each other's circles but through a series of events they're able to actually form a connection, form a bond, and that turns into a, um, a relationship. I thought that it was, aside from the fact that I needed it to be a, a good, I needed a good book to just kind of like lighten my spirits a little bit. I, I thought that the premise of it was really interesting and is not just the stereotypical, like, you know, again, boy meets girl, girl falls in love, blah, blah, blah. A person that loves romance novels will probably rate this a lot higher than I did, but even so, so someone that is not um, into romance novels, but will read them every now and then, I think it's a good book to consider reading. All right, then the third least favorite, I don't know how we're doing this, but the third book that I'm gonna talk about um, in this ranking is Imago by Octavia E. Butler. So I, rated this book three out of five stars and for me three out of five stars is kind of like average i will say that i was the most out of this geno Zenesis series i was the most disappointed in the third book and i've talked about this in my um, january wrap-up so if you haven't seen that already definitely God, i can't remember which one definitely click the card above to watch like you know my detailed thoughts about that particular book but it was the most um disappointing i guess out of that series for me so for that reason i'm kind of rating it three out of five in relation to the other books in the series but also in, in the books in this um video that i'm talking about here but it's essentially wraps up this the geno genesis um story where it started off with um the world ending and it, these alien species who come and kind of mate with a woman named lilith it then goes on to in the second book talking about what that species so that actual person, um, what his experience is like, how he shows his humanity between being human and also being part alien species. And then it wraps up with Imago and just kind of wraps up that story. I thought again that it was a little bit of a letdown compared to the other books, but it was still a genre that I loved. I loved reading some of the upfront part of it where it was talking about again the world building and she did a good job of employing that like showing me not telling me kind of aspect so for that reason i rated it a three out of five stars and if you i would recommend this book for anyone that has read the first two books within the um, xenogenesis series if you haven't i probably would not recommend that you read this but if you have and you just kind of want to understand how the story ends up then i definitely would recommend this book for you the next book that i want to talk about is stay with me by ayobami adebayo and I rated this book, I believe, 3.75 out of five stars. I really quite enjoyed this book and it was a little bit more than average. This one was also more on the kind of sad side. So it's talking about two people, I believe the character's name is Jide and I can't remember the other character's name. I'll put it somewhere here on the screen. But the two of them meet in college and end up falling in love and getting married. They're two Nigerian, um, 
individuals. And so there's a whole history of how Nigeria places emphasis on children and how women have a certain part and men have a certain part and, you know, what happens when children are not part of a marriage and sometimes how overbearing Nigerian parents can be when it comes to that whole thing. So a really interesting book. If you're interested in understanding a little bit more about like Yoruba culture as it relates to family, if you're just curious about kind of a romance novel but it's not quite a super happy ending but it is a happy ending <laughs> i'm doing a terrible job of explaining this if you're at all interested or have seen any of her work i, I would definitely recommend it for anyone that is of nigerian heritage if anyone that's interested in nigerian um, culture and as it relates to family and things like that i would definitely highly recommend this book for you. Hey friends, it's Editing Ada here, just checking in. I just realized that I completely forgot to talk about Legend Born by Tracy Dion, which is a young adult fiction novel that's kind of steeped in magic and um, just kind of mystical forces. So this is a book that I actually really love. I rated it, I think, believe, I believe 3.7 out of 5 stars. So really truly enjoyed it. I would recommend this book for anyone that is interested in a story that is more of the young adult but it's also touching on topics like racism or just otherism. Um, the main character Brie is uh, going through an experience where her mother ends up passing away right before she starts this like early start college program and so she's reconciling with the identity of who her mother actually is, reconciling with who she is as a person and just really understanding all of the decisions and events that occurred in her past, how they have led her to be in a really unique position that she's in. There's a lot of like magic and like you know warlocks and like that sort of thing so if you're interested in that kind of con that kind of a story you know told from the the perspective of a young black woman, I would definitely highly recommend that you consider Legend Born. And sorry again for missing <laughs> this video. I know I look super crazy, but you know, we move back to the video. The next book that I'm going to talk about is Parable of the Sower by again Octavia e. Butler. This book I rated a much higher at four out of five stars. I think that this book was really interesting in that it was a different concept than anything I have read before. So Parable of the Sower is about a young woman named Lauren who is um, kind of the founder of this philosophy called Earthseed and it brings us or we start off with this kind of post apocalyptic, apocalyptic, this post apocalyptic world where very far into the future, the earth is kind of going through climate, um, see, uh, climate events and there's kind of just destruction in the world that has driven, unfortunately, humans and humanity to really ugly ways of, of acting and behaving. And so these communities, um, there's small communities that have to protect themselves and um, create barriers against the outside world. Lauren is a part of one of these communities and she eventually comes to realize that this this barrier, this boundary, um, this wall that we have is not going to is not gonna last, it's not gonna stay there. So we have to figure out how to protect ourselves, how to find better land, how to build a, a new way of thinking, a new way of operating so that we can survive as an immediate uh, community of her community and then also as um, as humanity. So there are really interesting topics that are discussed. And so if you are looking for something that is very much science fiction out of this not even out of this world but just futuristic that touches on topics that we even deal with today that are, are tough for us to talk about today i would definitely recommend this book for for you um i would say that it is dark you know just trigger warning there are instances of um, assault by extreme violence but if you are able to handle those and you, again you're interested in that sort of like kind of deep different thinking, um, then I would definitely recommend that you consider reading Parable of the Seller. Another four star book that I absolutely loved was Jade War. And this is surprising, it's pretty shocking because I hate, well not hated, but I did not enjoy the prequel, um, Jade City, as much. So Jade War is the second in a trilogy and I read Jade City, uh, I believe like July of last year. If you're looking for a review of that book, I definitely have that in a video that I will link uh, 
one of these, I can't remember these faces. And yeah, I, but I, I enjoyed Jade War much more than I enjoyed Jade City. Jade City is essentially about the clans and gangs of a fictional city called Jan Loon. And a young man named Lan is thrust into the leadership position of one of the clans and he has to basically get his clan or his gang into a better position. And we now see Jade War where his brother Hilo has taken over his position and how he has to navigate clan war between his clan, um, the Nopi clan and the Mountain clan, which is the, the clan that they are at war with. And it becomes much bigger than just their city of Jan Loon. It becomes much, uh, much more of a kind of, I guess, like a, a world war sort of deal. And there's a lot that both clans have to come to terms with, have to try to figure out and how to ultimately protect their natural resource, which is Jade. So if you want to see a full review of that Jade City, definitely um, check that video. But yeah, if you've, if you've read Jade City, I would definitely recommend that you read Jade Ward. In my opinion, it's much better. You don't really have the second in a trilogy be to me, the better book, but it definitely is much better. So I would I would say that if you've read Jade City, definitely read Jade War. If you're interested in the Green Bones saga, I would say read Jade City, obviously, and then definitely read Jade War. But if you have no interest in reading Jade City, then I don't know that you would be able to really understand Jade War without having read it. In that case, maybe I wouldn't recommend it, but I, I really highly loved it. So I would definitely highly recommend it. All right, so now we're getting into the fives and I will honestly say I loved every every book that I've read that I, I mean, I obviously love a book if I rate it five stars, but really truly loved these books. So kicking it off with Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Boley. It's a book that I just most recently finished. It is about a young woman named Donis Fontaine who is half um, half white, I guess, and half um, Native American. And she has a very strong connection to her Native American and white side through her love for, I can't pronounce the the tribe that she's from, but through her love of that particular tribe's culture and use of herbs and healing um, ointments and things like that, she's able to solve an issue that is happening in her community, which is a overuse of methamphetamine. And so this drug is really kind of inf infiltrated her community and it's now causing so many people that she loves to be addicted and then to to die to um, either through violence or through overdose. If you're looking for like a contemporary book on Native American culture that reads really interesting, I would definitely recommend this book. There are not a lot of books that focus on like Native Americans, but in a way that's like positive or that it's in a way that's like modern. If you're looking for like a history book, this is probably not it. But if you're looking for just kind of like a fictional story that has a strong development of characters, a strong development of story, and gives you a very clear understanding of what it would be, what it would be like to be in that community and some of the afflictions that are actually affecting either this community or communities that are similar to it, then I would definitely recommend that you consider reading this. So the other book that uh, I've rated really highly and is my favorite uh, books of this quarter would be Against the Loveless World, which I of course also rated five stars. I loved this book and I loved the main character Nair. This is essentially about the Palestinian struggle and talks about a kind of occupation of Palestinians in their home, their home land. So Nair is um, a young woman who grew up in Kuwait and she had a beautiful life there. And then unfortunately, through a series of events, she had she became a refugee and, and went to Jordan, didn't love the life that she had in Jordan, experienced poverty, had to go into like sex work in order to help her family, just had a, a series of very unfortunate events that occurred in her life. I have done a, a full review of this book and I will link that up in the cards above and definitely check it out. There's a lot of really interesting themes on identity, themes on colonialism and like military occupation. So I I really highly recommend it. Again, there's also trigger warning instances of assault, but that aside, I, I really truly enjoyed this book and I would highly recommend it for anyone that's interested in understanding a bit more about like that Palestinian struggle because I, I will admit that was a bit, I was a bit ignorant to it. So anyone that's like looking for that and then also 
Um, just looking for like a different a different type of book that is like it's very sad but it's very uplifting very much filled with hope and um optimism in my opinion i would definitely highly 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 recommend that book and just for just for the simple fact that i love nahir nahir is amazing and um I will, I will never ever forget her story. So definitely, definitely loved her and definitely loved that book. All right, so bonus. I know I said that I was gonna talk about those books that I read, but there is one other book that I read this quarter that I think is probably my favorite of all time. It's an author that none of you have ever heard of, but it's a book that my fiance actually wrote for me so that he could propose. I will actually put up a clip here of him um, going through the process of writing this book, going through the process of getting one copy, <laughs> one single copy published and um, getting it into a bookstore so that I could find it and read it and say yes to him asking me to marry him. So it is a book called What I Love About Ada and it has honestly a little bit of our love story. Now I said that I don't like romance books and I really truly don't but this is a five out of five star book. I have never read anything more amazing in my life. So um, I I love this and I loved the fact that he did something so sweet um, and so kind and so uniquely me. And um, and I'm just so happy to, to be able to say yes to him. I mean, it, it makes sense that I shared it. I don't typically share personal content, but I mean, this is a bookish channel and I got a book about me and got proposed to in a bookstore. So I feel like it's kind of relevant here. So yeah, I love that book and that's a bonus. Of course, it's not it's not a book that any of you can ever go and, and get a copy of, but in terms of me, the books that I read, definitely my favorite book of this quarter and probably of my life. So that is it. Those are all of the books that I read this quarter in ranking from least uh, ranked to highest ranked. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you've thought. Um, have I convinced you to read any of these books? Have I maybe convinced you maybe not to pick up any books? I'm really curious to know what uh, your thoughts are and if you also like what you're reading, what's what's going on and, and what you um, what you're really enjoying or what you really enjoyed this quarter. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. By liking this, it helps to put this channel in front of more viewers like yourself that love black, indigenous, persons of color, women, authors, and stories from those communities. If you give it a thumbs up, somehow the YouTube God's algorithm knows that this channel is for people that are like yourself. If you are new and you haven't subscribed yet, definitely subscribe down below and hit the notification bell so you're notified of every single time that I upload. That is it for me. I will see you guys in the next one.